Hi, Librarian Tara here to talk to you about citing your sources. I'm going to talk to you about uh, the reasons why we cite our sources and um, about the two parts of the citations that you're going to need to have, whether you cite your sources in the MLA or the APA format. So first of all, what do we mean by cite or citation? So Merriam-Webster says that cite means to mention something, especially as an example, or to support an idea or an opinion. So when we cite our sources, we're bringing in some outside evidence to support what we have to say. Um, and then the, uh, another dictionary opinion, uh, definition says that it's to quote or refer to something as an authority or an example um, in backing up something that we're doing in making an argument. So a similar kind of idea there. Okay, so why do we bother with, oh wait, first of all, oops. Yeah, why do we bother with making a citation? So a couple of reasons. One, we want to give credit to where credit is due. So um, when somebody puts an effort into um, creating a, a, an article or a study or they create a picture or anything that we're going to use in our research papers or in our presentations or um, you know in anything that we're we're going to put out there um, to the public we need to say hey you know thanks for for, for doing that thanks for putting in that work and that effort um, you know, and we, we can do that very simply by simply citing the source, right? Um, we also cite our sources to help our audience. So the people that we're presenting to, they might be interested in reading that book that we refer to or the article that we refer to. They may want to go, um, you know, we might mention a, a fact or a sentence or or two, and they may want to go ahead and read the whole article or, or look deeper into the thing that you mentioned to them. You may have piqued their interest. So by telling them where you got the information, then you're helping them to go and further their own research. Um, by citing our sources, we're engaging in a scholarly, scholarly conversation. So the way that scholars talk to one another in a way is through their citations. All research is built upon prior research. So uh, research isn't done out of the blue. It's, you know, somebody, um, they, they, you know, stands on the, the shoulders of giants, right? They, they take what's already known through um, prior research and they take the questions that are, are generated by that research and say, okay, based on what we know, because this person did this research and that person did that research, I have this theory and now we're gonna test it out. And uh, so I tested it out and this is what I found, and this is what I think it means, and these are the new questions that come up because of it. And um, so they, in, in doing that, they, they cite all of the sources that they used in coming up with that hypothesis. And so subsequently, somebody else will do an article or a study, and they'll refer to that article saying, well, okay, so this uh, person found this interesting finding, and they had these interesting questions, and I decided to just test that on out. So. So they're, they're entering into this, um, this scholastic conversation that drives the generation of new ideas, of new knowledge, right, through an ongoing conversation, right? Okay, so we also cite our sources to make us look good, right? So if I'm presenting an information in a research paper at, at college, right, I'm generally not a, an authority or, a, or an expert on the thing that I'm doing my research paper on, right? Not at this level, not when I'm in, in my first or second year of college, 
generally even my third or fourth year of college. So um, what I need to do is I need to borrow on the expertise of others. So I do that by um, going out and find, finding good sources of information by uh, experts, right? By authorities. And then um, I'm sharing their ideas, their research, their information with my audience. And I'm letting my audience know that I did that. So I'm saying, um, you know, so they can trust what I have to say because I got authoritative information. Okay, so I'm letting my audience know that I have good information by citing good sources. And of course, you've heard this before, you avoid plagiarism by simply saying where you got your information from. It's all you need to do to avoid plagiarism. Okay, so there are two parts to citing information. Um, you, uh, you need to cite at the point at which you introduce the information or the idea, right? So not only do you need to cite when you use a direct quote, my rule of thumb is if you use three words in a row from somebody else, you should probably put some quotation marks around it and say where you got it from. Um, but even if you paraphrase what they said, which is to, to put their ideas or, or words into your own words, or if you summarize uh, what they said, like, you know, take uh, maybe they had a whole essay and you summarize it in a sentence or two. Um, you still need to say where it came from. Um, or even if you're referring to, say, like a whole theory of theirs, you still need to cite it. You need to say where it came from. Uh, whenever you refer to somebody else's ideas or data or, uh, or, or whatever, at the point at which you're talking about that, at which you introduce it in your text or in the flow of your speech, at that point, you are giving a short in-text citation. What they mean by in-text is it's in the flow of the text you're giving that citation. Sometimes it's called a parenthetical citation because you, uh, in writing, you put that, um, or at least part of it, in parentheses. Parenthetical is in parentheses. Okay, so we'll see mention of that sometimes. Now, this is just a little um, bit of information that um, lets the user turn back to the list at the back of this of the of your paper to what they call the bibliographic citation list. So, um, in different styles of citation, this list is referred to as different things: bibliography reference list, works cited, um, but what this is is a longer detailed citation. So this is all of the information the person needs to actually go, you know, identify this source and go find it themselves. So the in-text citation is really just a pointer. It's like an, 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 a reverse index, right? So, you know, in books you have the index that tells you the page, you see a word in the page number, so it's there's not a whole lot of information there. It just tells you where to go. So this is like the reverse. So in the text of your paper, there's just a little word, which is usually the author's name and a, and the page number, right? So the author's name, you can go back to the back of the page of the paper and see a list of author's names. You can find the author's names. And then you find the whole citation, right? So now you can go find that same article and know what page to look on on that article. Or you find that book and you know what page to look in on the in that book, right? So um, that's that page is called um, is full of citations they call bibliographic citations. Um, so again, it includes all of the details somebody needs in order to get the the actual source themselves. Okay, so there's different styles of citing, okay, and they're used by different um, 
disciplines uh, in different fields of study. Um, so, oops, MLA, for example, the Modern Language Association, they came up with a, kind of a standardized way, like this is the way we're going to cite our sources. Um, so they just have, you know, a certain convention or standard way, this is how we're going to present the sources. And it's typically used by um, uh, language, literature, arts, scholars in the music and philosophy and religion, things of this nature. It's uh, very commonly used at uh, community college level. Uh, so here's an example of a passage, or a, um, this is a, a paraphrase of something from an article. If you reused your password, you know, it's just a paraphrase of something. And then you see in, in parentheses, the author of the article, the author's last name, and the page number in parentheses. This is in the MLA style. And then underneath that, you'll see the bibliographic citation, which is in uh, the list at the back of the paper. And in MLA, this is called the works cited list. So um, this is the way it's formatted in the MLA style. These are you know, the bits of information that MLA wants in the citation and in the order and the way that it wants it cited. Um, so for APA, um, that comes from the American Psychological or American Psychology Association, pardon me. Um, and they're used by scholars not only in psychology but other social sciences such as business economics political science uh, social work etc um and so the the idea is the same the format is slightly different so again we have the very same paraphrase here you see in parentheses again there's the author's last name but in the APA style, they do want to see the publication year. And then they have a P for the page number and the page number itself. So very similar, just a little bit different. And then uh, we see um, then the, uh, sorry, the spacing's a little off there, uh, the bibliographic citation. So in APA, that list is called um, uh, references, I believe. Uh, so we see the author's last name and the year and the title of the article and, and you know, similar things go into the citation, um, but the way it's arranged and the way they, you know, want to display the, the volume and the issue number and that is a little bit different, but the idea is the same to give the, enough information to the reader so they can go get that article themselves if they want to read it. Now I want to show you, I'm going to go to the, um, our library homepage. Again, I'm going to go to the uh, subject guides. I'm going to scroll down to the technology guide that I made for your class. And, oh, I'm sorry, I am not doing that. I'm going to go back. I'll show you there's a whole um, citation guide. So I'll go back up here to citations. Sorry about that. And um, I, I just wanted to show you this uh, graphic real quick. Let me see if I can zoom, zoom in. This is a very handy guide. Do I need to cite this? So the question is, did you make it? And if the answer is yes, so in other words, if it came out of your own work, your own mind, uh, no, you don't need to cite it. Um, if it didn't, uh, yes, you need to cite it. It's very simple. Okay, now, um, what I wanted to show you here is that um, we have some tabs here, APA and MLA. So these are some... Uh, resources you can use to see examples of the citations. So you can learn here more about the in-text citations and some examples. 
So these are models that you can use. So if you make your citations look like these, um, you're probably going to do well, right? Also, uh, there's a link here over to the left. You'll see OWL. OWL stands for Online Writing Lab. It's from Purdue University. These are excellent. Excellent. They can help you cite things correctly. Um, and uh, let's see, there's similar things here for MLA about citations, index citations. They also have the paper format. So that's like margins, spacing, indents, um, things of this nature. So that'll give you um, all the specifications for that as well. And again, um, some models that you can use, um, links to the Purdue OWL site, etc., and explain uh, how you can do those things. Also, there are some online tools available here for you um, that you can use, like Noodle Tools, um, um, Paperfile, Mendeley. These are things that you can use to help you um, cite sources. So for example, Noodle Tools will give you a nice form. They'll ask you, first of all, what do you have? Well, I have a, um, a, a government document. Okay, so here's a form. Fill this out. And it will guide you through um, what it, you know what you need um, and how you know, what do you capitalize and what you don't you and it will form it'll it'll like generate a, a formatted citation for you. Um, also, you might notice in most of the databases there's a cite button or something like that where you can get a formatted citation. Uh, use those with caution. However, um, I found that. I would say four times out of five, there is some mistake that you need to correct when you use those. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, they might save you a little time, you know, you don't have to figure out, well, do I need a comma there or a period, but um, there may be something you need to correct um, because it's, it's something that's just created by a computer algorithm. And, uh, you know, it's not smart enough to figure out like, oh, that doesn't need to be completely capitalized like that. So um, use those with caution. Use these with caution for the same reason. Um, so oftentimes I find that, you know, you know, by the time you get, get done, uh, you know, writing three or four papers, you're going to be pretty fast at doing this from scratch anyway. Um, and, you know, especially, and if you have something tricky, you can look it up in OWL or whatever. And if you have something uh, particularly tricky, uh, bring it to me. I love those tricky ones. It's kind of like a puzzle, you know. I, I don't know. I like a challenge. Uh, and I am not afraid. I'll, I'll cite anything. Uh, bring it on. Um, and another thing, uh, you know, we're happy, the librarians, we're happy to, like, double check your citations for you. You know, we're, we're just really, you know, this can be tricky. Citing your, 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 citing your sources can be kind of tricky, especially some of the sources you can find these days. You're like, I don't know, it's like a reprint of a government um, document, but it's online, but it's inside of a database, and, you know, how do you cite that? It can be really kind of tricky sometimes. So, you know, come see a librarian. We'll try to help you out with that. I'd be happy to.